All right, hey everybody, we just ended class. It's 9.36, you just started your second block. So anyways, we literally just talked with one another two minutes ago. I was like, go to your second block, go, hey. I explained kind of this stuff here. A faster way to get this information here was to notice there was a pattern, right? It repeated, once we got to 30 and 30 repeated, and then we went to 28, maybe you noticed, hey, then I can do 24 afterwards, then I can do 18, then I can do 10, because Quadratics have symmetry, right? Have symmetry. And they also have this pattern where now we're going down by two, we're going down by four, we're going down by six, we're going down by eight, right? A consistent second change of minus two. Uh, Tiffany, pause, grab me for a second. Just literally like a minute, it had to be a minute ago because we're only three minutes since you guys left, but said, hey, I got even a faster way. So perhaps you did this even a fast rate. There's a cool way that, you know, I, I, my mind didn't go there because I had a table set up. The teacher put the table in for me. But she's like, you know what? I think the teachers taught me well enough to do this faster than that. Um, and what Tiffany said is, well, why don't I just factor this? Huh, factor this. She said, I can do this really quickly simply by factoring. And then what is factored form good for? Okay, this is not factor form. This is standard form. Okay, standard form has no parentheses in it. It's written in the form, right? Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. We're going to get used to that as we do more quadratics here, okay? So here, our A is negative 1 or B is 17 or C is negative 42. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. It's written in standard form. So if you want to do this standard form to factor form, remember, we spent last unit going from sum to product, okay? Sum to product. So simply, right, if I want to get this in factor form, I need to factor this polynomial right here, okay? How do I do that? Uh, well, I guess I could set up my generic rectangle. Okay, it's a little bit harder because this is negative x squared, but I think I think you can get there. I think we'll get there here. This is negative 42 up here, okay? Diamond's easy when we have, uh, well, this is gonna be negative right here. So it's gonna be positive up top here. So I'm gonna do 42 x squared in the top. Uh, how many x's do I have to play with? I have 17 x's to play with. So it sounds like she factored this because factor form is good for what? It tells you the x-intercepts. tells you the x-intercepts here. So if this is 17 x for the amount of x's that I have, um, I need to find two numbers that multiply to 42 and add to 17. Not that many things go to 42. Four doesn't go into, for instance, as four goes into 40 and 44. Two goes into it 21 times. That doesn't quite get us to 17. Um, 15 doesn't go into, I'm thinking 15. 16, no, that doesn't work. Uh, 12, no, 14, mm, 14 and three. There we go. I would have been more structured with it if I were really modeling this for you. I'd say one and 42, nope, doesn't get you to 17. Two and 21, nope, doesn't work here. Three ends, is three going to 42? Yes, it does. Three goes into it 14 times. There we go. There we go, we have it. So uh, I'm gonna put it down here, uh, 14X and 3X and check it out. Okay, you can skip this whole table thing here because once we have this thing factored, we're going to get some x-intercepts here, some good old x-intercepts here. This is negative x squared, so I got to put this, I'll put the, I'll try the negative x there and I'll try positive x here. x times negative x is negative x squared. Um, now if we get to the 14, um, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do the minus 14 here. Oh, no, not minus 14, it'll be plus 14, so we got plus 14, so 14 times x, there we go. And then negative x, to get to 3x, we'd have to multiply that by negative three, right? Negative three times negative one's positive three, and this is positive three x, the x is just going here. And it looks like it's gonna work out. Negative three times 14 is negative 42. And what do we have here? Look at this out, factored form. Y equals, well, we got negative x plus 14, times by x minus three. This technically isn't in fully factored form. This isn't factored form because we have this pesky negative in front, okay? It is a little confusing here if we have this, this is negative front here. So what I'm gonna do is negative x plus 14. I'm gonna factor out a negative one from that because this is, x is negative one times by x. 14 is negative one times what? Negative one times negative 14 would be equivalent to positive 14 here. So anyways, just for the sake of consistency, you're never really have that negative thing in front of this. This wouldn't be in like a uh, fully factored form if you don't have a positive kind of uh, variable in there. So that's just one thing to look out for. Not a huge deal if you have it like this. But if I pull out that negative in front of the X plus 14, I get negative times by the quantity X minus 14 and times by x minus three. And what do we have here? What do we have here? So this is a great idea to save you from this whole table right here. Um, Tiffany said, you know what, I can factor this 
and boom, there you have it, okay? We're going to have X intercepts at 14, 0, and 3, 0, okay? So what does that mean for the parabola? Let's maybe get the parabola up here. And so, yeah, if I kept filling this in, right, I would have gotten there anyways, right? We already knew this, right? 10 and the next one would be zeros. So check it out here. Those are my zeros, right? My X intercepts right there. 14, 0, I could have gotten that just by factoring here. So we need shortcut from Tiffany. So it sounds like Tiffany's just like, you might be thinking, well, what's my vertex going to be then? Tiffany probably thought I'm going to follow the same thing that we're on the warm up slides was once I have my X intercepts, I can get my line of symmetry. Once I have my line of symmetry, I can get my vertex. Stay with me if you want to do it with me. I'll just do it with you. I'll find your vertex because I have fun. I enjoy doing these things here, believe it or not. Um, and so those are my X intercepts here because I get the factor form and yeah, just take the opposite signs there. Good to go. Um, and what's going to tell me my graph is how far, right? How far it got thrown, okay? Just dealing with L graphs here, just doing quadrant one. Okay, all positive values. So we'll just do an L graph here. And I got one at three, zero, and another one at 14, zero. Just a brief sketch here. Those are where my zeros are gonna be. So the question is, does it go like this? Does it go like that? Like how high up does it go? And I'm not gonna scale this quite yet up here. Um, but to get the vertex, first we need to get our line of symmetry. Okay, line of symmetry. Line of symmetry is gonna be halfway between, right? We need to figure out what is going to be exactly halfway between this. Because we know that a parabola has symmetry. It's going to look the same on this side as it is on this side. So how do we do that? This is 3 here. This is 14. What's halfway between that? Well, we got to find the halfway point. we got to average 3 and 14. So 3 plus 14 is 17 divided by 2, 8.5. Look in the table. This is what I try to draw your attention to. Our, our vertex has to be 8.5. I think Tiffany was the one who said on the, the chat too that uh, our, our, our our vertex, or line of symmetry is going to be 8.5. Okay, nice. Uh, so does that mean it's going to go up to 30 or is it going to go a little higher than that? Well, vertex is the one and only point on a parabola that's either the very highest or very lowest point. You can only have one, right? Only have one vertex on a parabola. So uh, it's not going to be 30. It's going to be a little bit a little bit higher than that, right? Higher than that. So this is going to have a maximum. And not a minimum here, right? It's going to have a maximum point because it's a down. It's an unhappy parabola, down facing parabola. Okay. So, anyways, line of symmetry. What we figured out here is that this is my middle point. It's going to be at 8.5. We need to now figure out how high up when it's going to hit that 8.5 and come back down. What does our parabola look like? How high is this going to be? So, what we're going to do is to get our vertex. What we got to do is let's go back to our original equation here. Okay, we'll go back to our original equation. Somebody asked here, what? I don't, still don't quite get the, the vertex equation thing here. That's getting a little tough here, right? A little bit tough here because you get the line of symmetry and then there's all this math you have to do to get the vertex. It's not so bad. But the way to get the vertex, you go back to the original equation. Okay, we have, we know that the x coordinate of the vertex has got to be the same as where the line of symmetry is because the vertex is always on the line of symmetry. It's the highest point. It looks the same on one side of the vertex as it is on the other. So we're going to go back to our original equation, which is y equals negative x squared um, plus 17x um, and then minus 42. And now I'm going to plug in this 8.5. I'm going to plug in one. I know my x coordinate's got to be that because the x coordinate of the vertex is always on the line of symmetry. So I'm going to do negative, and then I'm going to do 8.5 squared plus 17. You probably have this figured out if you're still watching this here, yeah? May as well finish it with me anyways here. Okay, so to get my y coordinate, okay, so vertex, I'm getting my y coordinate. This is going to all work to get the y coordinate. I already know my x coordinate is going to be this, 8.5. So that's why I put 8.5 in here. 8.5 in here, I'm simply going to find the coordinate pair. What does 8.5 go with? for this particular parabola. So 8.5 times 8.5, I don't wanna do that in my head. Why do that in my head? Why, I've thought enough this morning. So 8.5 squared is, no, eight squared is 64. What did I do wrong here? 8.5 squared is 72.25. We gotta make it negative. We gotta, we gotta, so this here, this, this, this exponent goes just to the x. And then, so it's x squared, make it negative. That's what negative x squared is. So we get y equals negative 72. 25, but that's not all because I have to do 17 times 8.5. That's the next part, my middle term, my x term, is 17 of those x's. So 17 times by 8.5 is 144.5. 
it's getting messy, minus 42. So now we combine our like terms. We only got numbers here, and then we're gonna get our y, a freaking y coordinate. I love it. All right, so we're gonna subtract 72.25. The heck is it actually? Yeah, it is actually. That's halfway of that. How about that? 144.5 minus 72.25. That is this is the, the halfway point. Uh, we subtract that there, we get 72.25 and subtract 42 from it. You can verify this on your own. Sorry, it was a little confusing this last step here. Subtract 42 from it and we get 30.25. So that parabola just goes just over 30 yards in the air. Remember we're measuring in yards here, 8.5. And you know what? We're just doing a basic sketch of this here. So I'm just gonna put 30.25 right there. And let's draw in that parabola, shall we? It's easier if I put the vertex down first because then I just, with some symmetry, because I slow down as I'm getting to that vertex, we slow and then we change direction. And then the same thing happens now. And now gravity really takes over and we fall down and bam. Our water balloon goes nuts, and there's water everywhere on the 14-yard line. Psh, catapult here. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. All right, you be the judge. How far did Magnanimous throw it? How high did she throw it? I think you can figure that out here. Email me if you have any questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Tiffany, for staying afterwards. I wouldn't have filmed out this video otherwise. Uh, so nice work. Maybe think about how she did it. Factored, got the x-intercepts. Then use the tricks to get the vertex once you have the x-intercepts and you had the equation. Thank you so much for watching. Have a pleasant few days. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.